This is Romy here. Welcome back to Lurkers. We are here at the pub trying to, you know, learn about Mr. American Detective Man over here, I guess. <laughs> he lowers his voice to a whisper. Oh, William. William. Okay, that's, that should be easy to remember. William from Colioco. If you guys know, you know. <laughs> I'm serious. This is the first time I've heard someone admit to it, admit it so nonchalantly. I admire you. I lean back in my chair, not buying a single word. Well, I'm not prone to shout out from the rooftops either, so please forget about it, alright? Can we go back to where you tell me about your findings in this investigation? Do you have any clue that the Matt has overlooked? He watches me for a long moment, seemingly weighing his options before he finally rests his elbows on the table and leans forward. Well, yes, or at least I think so. If I tell you, will you work with me? I could use an assistant. And you would get all the details of the investigation first pain. I nod. It's way, more, it's way more than I'm going to achieve on my own. He lowers his voice still more and just voice still more and checks that nobody is eavesdropping on us before talking. There's a guy at the Illustrated Police News that often arrives at the crime scenes before the police. A journalist. Ah, our other contender. Well, I don't know if these are contenders or not. I don't know if we're able to date anybody. Well, it's the Illustrated that we are talking about. You can call it a newspaper if you want, but from what I've seen of it, it's just garbage. We're not in agreement. I know, they I know they publish all the public's uh, executions with accurate drawings of the faces of the criminals while dying in the gallows. It's rather sick. And all the worst crimes with all the kind of gory details, yes. Of course, they love the Whitechapel murder. It has made them sell double or triple. It's exactly the kind of crap their public adores. He's right again. Even being a foreigner, he grasped in a moment the true nature of the regular Londoner. Wait, what was his two purposes? To help me in... He didn't ask the second one. He didn't say the second one because my guy said, I don't care. Right? The more dreadful, the more chilling a crime is, the more we love it. This is... I do not. <laughs> this is the breeding ground of foul creatures such as the Whitechapel murder. It's what we deserve as a society. The kind of society that leaves their lost mothers to their own devices until they are found dead and their abdomens ripped open by a deep, jagged knife wound. I'm going to investigate this. Journalist or whatever you want to call him. Either he will lead us directly to the murderer because there's a connection between them. He gives me a point to look at this point. Or he is the Whitechapel murderer himself. Ooh. A 10 minute handsome cab can't handsome cab ride later paid by William the Rich American of course. And we step in the office of the Illustrated Police News in the Strand. Strand or Stan? Strand. Oh, I, okay. Wait, what? Okay, sorry. I watch with amusement as the detective shows his permit into the face of every clerk who approaches us. The power of official seals. In less than two minutes, we are led to Mr. Perkett's office and told, and told to wait for the man himself. That was fast. What do you think of this place, Eddie? I don't even blink at noticing I've quickly gone from being Mr. Nichols to Eddie. Then he's the boss, perhaps. I take a look at some of the cutting direct de decorating cut the cuttings decorating the walls of the office between some dark and distinct paintings and are not and a not less vague diploma. If it's the image I had of the illustrated William. He squints at me with a chuckle. Oh, he's <laughs> he paused to say his name is William, okay. I was like, what? The painting looks like him? He squints at me with a chuckle and leans in to study the black and white illustrations up closer up. Monkeys fight a duel to the death. So they both lost. <laughs> I remember this one. Very informative. I glance at the other headlines. All of them similarly sensational. Six nuns buried alive. More vi vivisection horrors. Oh. A man eaten by cats. What the fuck? All of them demonstrate with lewd and graphic pictures of blood spurting from wounds, women faces twisted in terror, and scantily clad young ladies. Fearful position of a somnambulous narrow escape. So did I even say that word? Hey! Oh, shipwreck sharks? By sharks? Jeez, that would be scary. I don't like the water, so I would be deathly afraid of that one. Lips kiss last moments. Oh, is this a, a hanging? A young girl's life saved by her pet cat? Was it burning or something? Smoke? Ah, uh, smoke. The sound of the office door opening makes us turn. Well, hello there, sir. 
Good morning, gentlemen. So this is Mr. Perkis, the crazy uh, journalist. <laughs> Mr. Perkis, George Perkis, and the flash proprietor of the Illustrated Police News, the worst newspaper in England. The man laughs at his own joke and women in my share pointed look. Oh, you didn't know. The Paul Mall Gazette honored us with that title two years ago. I noticed you were studying some of our headlines and illustrations when I came in. Shocked. Well, I could have His answer is a hearty laugh. Well, as I usually say, we can't all be the Times or the Telegraph, so we must put up with the police news. William smiles politely, but I can't help but press on with the topic. But don't you feel at least a bit guilty, knowing you're basically glorifying crime? Oh, no, 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 my dear. The Illustrated doesn't glorify crime. Rather than that, I would say that my paper acts as an encouragement to a good life, since it warns of the horrors and terrible consequences of crime. But if you, like... You're also glorifying crime, which makes, like, said murderer happy to see their crime being glorified. If they're alive to see it, of course. I know the illustrations are sensationalist, but apart from that, there's nothing questionable in my paper. And let's be honest, those illustrations are exactly what my public craves. I have half a dozen accomplished artists on my permanent staff in London, and somewhere between 70 and 100 freelance artists is spread out across the country. Provide the best. Is my dad calling me? No, he's just messaging me. <laughs> or rather, best portraits published by any journal. I was like, if my dad's calling me, I'm putting everything on hold. William clears his throat to get the attention of the pleased man. Right, we are here to ask about one of the members of your staff, in fact. Not true, my secretary told me you came on behalf of Mr. Charles Warren, but you're American, right? What are your positions in the Met, if I may ask? We are external consultants. William takes out the permit once more and lets the man examine it. Mr. Perkis takes a quick glance at it and gives it back to William. So it's true, the Met is hiring detectives to help with the wa white, wa I was say white chapel, white chapel murders. That isn't exactly true, but William smiles again and says nothing, letting Mr. Perkis believe whatever is more convenient for him. We'd like to talk with Chris Forrester. Mr. Perkis. Look, I keep yawning, sorry. Mr. Perkis frowns thoughtfully. I literally got eight hours of sleep today, so I don't know why I'm yawning. I should have guessed what you'd wanted to talk with him, since he's covered the Whitechapel crimes. How many characters are there? <laughs> is he here right now? Oh, I get a choice. I get a choice. My turn. My turn. What is Mr. Forrester's position in the industry? How long has he worked for you? Is there a reason for him to cover these crimes? Uh, what is his position? He's my main assistant, in fact. I'm a rather gloomy young man, but he's responsible, quick and dedicated. I don't know what we would do at the Illustrated without him. How long has he worked for you? The journalist wrinkles his nose in concentration. I can't recall, but it's been a while. He started here as an apprentice when he was 15. Wow. I'm glad he turned out to be such a trusty, worthy lad. Other young men of his age think only of drinking and chicks, but him? Half of the time, you don't even notice he's around. But then, boom! He has an article on top of my desk before I even get the word out about the news. Is there a reason for him to cover these crimes? Why, he lives in Whitechapel, so he's the closest man I have to those horrible events. What if he's the murderer? <laughs> Besides, he writes, but he also he's also quite decent at drawing, so he can attend the crime scenes on his own. Is he here right now? I regret to say that he called out sick today. Suspicious. I can give you his address, of course. Let it not be said that I don't cooperate with the man. That would be great. Thank you. Alright, um... We already know enough, thank you. Better to smile slightly at us. Okay, that wasn't really a choice that I had. I literally could pick all of them. <laughs> of course, my cooperation deserves some kind of small gratification. We are all businessmen here, right? Does he want money? The nerve of this man. I will share all the new information I get about the case in exchange for your doing the same. What do you think? Isn't that a win win? Well, I'm as quick at reacting, he offers the nasty journalist a charming smile and handshake, and I bite my tongue once more before I say something inconvenient. We are back at Whitechapel in less than half an hour. What is- this is kind of like scary though, the background, because everything's so misty. Of course the journalist Forrester had to live in this hell of a neighborhood. I sigh and push my wet locks of hair out of my face. We climb down the handsome cab in what plain Whitechapel High Street, and the detective quickly pushes me ahead after tripping the cabbie hand- tip tipping not tripping, he's not tripping the cabbie. There's no time to waste, Eddie. We need to check if the journalist is sick at home or just pretending. Well, if it's true that he's sick, he'll be at home, as if someone would choose to go outside in this weather if they could avoid it. He lives near here, let's go. Alright, 
Thank God I did not live in this era. I would not know how to... I mean... <laughs> who am I kidding? I don't even know how to read a map nowadays. We take Brick Lane, which is still moderately populated with people coming and going, minding their own business. Oh, this is cool. Okay. So he lives here? This red section? Or no. <laughs> William stops in front of a door of a two-story building and knocks. Oh, he is so fucking cute. Yo, can we go for him? I want him. I want him. Gimme. A young man around my age opens the door. He's pale and his complexion is on the thin side with a sickly, sickly air to him. So it must be true that he stayed at home today because of his health. Do you need, do you need a nurse? Do you need orange juice? What do you need? I'm here. <laughs> Good afternoon, Mr. Forrester. We come on behalf of the Metropo Met Metropolitan Police Commissioner. Just for a couple of quick questions. The journalist stares at William without changing his expression, ignoring the official document that was shown to him. A bit uneasy, the detective keeps on talking. Your boss, Mr. Perkins, told us you're feeling unwell today. He gave us your address. Come in, then. I mean, we kind of already stepped inside. <laughs> I'll bring tea. Uh, I don't... I'm fine. I'm not parched. Uh, very intricate decor you have here. Well, when I step into the sitting room of the journalist, it's a small cramped space with a kitchenette attached to a wooden door. But it's the items that color the room that attract our attention at once. Okay, so I'm not the only- oh my god, why is there a school here? Oops, didn't mean to do that. The place looks half a dump and a half of a library with books. Pa pap papyrus, not papyrus. Papyrus and- right? Papyrus? And occ occ occultism. Related paraphernalia. What the fuck? <laughs> piled up everywhere. I glance down the small hall that leads to the second floor of his old volumes piled up on the floor gathering dust. You're not a murderer, are you? You're quite handsome. That doesn't mean he can't be a murderer just because he's handsome, you know, but it seems like that's uh, always a type I go for, apparently, even in this game. R.I.P. <laughs> the young man is back with a teapot in two minutes. Sit down. Oh, you can put those books on the floor, no worries. We're sorry for disturbing you. Do you live on your own? He nods with the same serious, unfazed face and retrieves three cups from the cupboard. We send silence while he pours the tea. Say, Mr. Forrester, you're here for the Whitechapel murders. And then freezes with the cup halfway to his mouth. That's right. I mean, why are you shocked? He knows. He's so handsome, dude. He's so fucking handsome. You cover those crimes for the Illustrator, right? In fact, you were the one of the first. You were one of the first people to arrive at the crime scene. I live nearby, as you can see. I was coming back from work and heard the police co constables whistle. You are going home at half past three in the morning. I went to take a look at the fires in the docks that night and wrote a short article for the, for the paper. Oh, he's like, are you, are you speculating me, bro? It's true, there were two fires that the night my mother died. Are you the son of Polly Nichols? Aye, you can spare me the condolences. I've already heard too many of these, <laughs> these last few weeks. What if he's like, nah, I wasn't going to tell you that. <laughs> He nods. What about the second murder? Six in the morning. Were you also checking on another event? No, I couldn't sleep, so I got up early and went for a stroll. My intention was to have a light breakfast at the frying pan. But before they could open, you met the three police constables, who had just found Annie Chapman in Hanbury Road. A cameraman, a car, sorry, a, not a cameraman, a car man found the body and alerted them, yes. What a fortunate coincidence for you. A journalist being in the right place at just the right moment. Yes. A long silence stretches between us. Forrester mostly stares at Willow on the defensive and sips his tea. I do the same. I suppose that, in case you have an informant, you wouldn't tell us your source of information, am I right? You're right. Although in this case, there's no such informant. Willem nods and places his cup carefully on the side of, on a side table, then grabs his hat and stands up. We won't bother you anymore, Mr. Forrester. Thank you for your time. Eddie, let's go. What? I don't want to go. He's quite cute. Can I just hang out with him? Just <laughs> I think it was the journalist with the light bell of my head and putting my hand to my cap and follow the infuriating detective. Oh, it's kind of... Why is it so red here now? We walk the, with the fast strides until we reach the corner and view the frying pan. What was that? You were a churl with him. Is that your usual way of extracting information? He shrugs and stops in front of the pub, resting his back on the wall of the opposite building. He wasn't going to say anything to us, I just wanted to tease him. And his suspicious behavior confirmed my previous deduction. That guy is hiding something. 
What's suspicious behavior? I'd act to save a cop came to my house when I'm sick and I'm starting to fire and started firing rude questions. You should be glad he even offered D. But you saw a Sydney room. Did it seem normal to you? There are books about spiritualism, de demonology, and divination everywhere. Divination, divination, whatever fuck. Anyway, I believe we met all the characters. Um, I'm really in love with you know the journalist, uh, Sir Chris Forrester, Mr. Forrester. <laughs> but anyway, this is where we're gonna end today's episode off. I hope you guys are finding this interesting so far. I'm finding it interesting because I don't know what's going on yet. Like. I hope we can solve this mystery. Uh, I don't know how many um, out, uh, not outs, endings there are to this game. Hopefully, this leads to one route. But being a visual novel, usually they have multiple routes. But anyway, thank you guys for watching today's episode. Stay beautiful, and I'll see you guys next one.